Welcome to the Atlantico podcast, where we talk about the science behind the Atlantico project, the Atlantic Ocean, and the human adventures experienced along the way. Here, we have conversations with guests from around the world who work together so that we can better understand, manage, and protect the ocean. So let's embark on the journey of Atlantico and discover the world that lies above and beneath the surface of the beautiful Atlantic Ocean. Welcome back to the Atlantico podcast. Our conversation today is with Fiona Elaine Strasser. Fiona is one of the All Atlantic Youth Ambassadors. And if you've listened to our episode with Tando Mazumba, you might remember that the Ambassador Program was launched by the All Atlantic Research Alliance and that it aims at empowering young ocean professionals as they promote sustainable development and stewardship of the Atlantic Ocean to give them a voice within their communities and beyond. So let's get to know Fiona and hear her messages as an ambassador. So Fiona, hi and welcome to the podcast. It is a pleasure to speak with you today. Hi, hi. I'm so happy to be here. And before we talk about the Youth Ambassador and your engagement for the ocean, I'd like for us all to get to know you a little bit more. So maybe can you tell us where and how your connection to the ocean started and what your journey has been to get where you are now? Yes, of course. So yeah, my name is Fiona. I am the German All Atlantic um, Youth Ambassador and I come originally from the south of Germany, from Munich. And to understand where my connection to the ocean comes from is I think it's from a very early age on, I was always a very water loving person. <laughs> As a child, as soon as I learned to swim, I was in the water all the time, obviously, if I could. And I was very fortunate that my parents took us traveling from an early age on a lot. So I I got to grow up being on beaches a lot and have different impressions from different countries, how fishermen would interact with the ocean and so on. So really just being in the water was my element. I was really happy to be in the water. And then also I have to say, I think the birth of my love for the ocean is really in the Canary Islands because it has become kind of like a second home to me. I even return there today <laughs> for my whole life, really. So this is really like the place, I think, where my love for the ocean has started and which has shaped my character as well. And then my father is also a very passionate diver. So he introduced me into scuba diving also from an early age on and that kind of opened like the last door to the ocean as soon as I could breathe underwater I that, like there was nothing else holding me back from exploring there so yeah coming from Germany it was not very um, normal thing really to start studying marine biology so I started off with biology to have a bit more of a broad foundation but I knew I wanted to go into science and I knew I wanted to go into marine science after that so my journey was really I did a bachelor's degree in biology and then I continued to do a master's degree in marine biology that was really my urge to start make a change and make a difference was really my motivation to go into this field and that's where I am now excellent yeah so from breathing in the water to studying the ocean it's a, it's a nice connection and um, to go back into today's topic, so can you tell us a little bit about your experience of the Youth Ambassador Programme? Maybe, you know, going back to how you've been involved and how it has helped you so far. So I remember the, to the more people I speak about being an All-Atlantic Ambassador, many people ask me, how did you get there? And I always give a very simple answer. I was like, I just applied for it, right? So I randomly saw that open call for people to to apply for this program to become a youth ambassador and it just really fit with me and so I applied and I was really happy to get it and that's really I think because many people ask how did you get such a cool opportunity and it's just like keep your eyes open there are opportunities out there and yeah and that's how I kind of like slided into the the youth ambassador program 
I was involved in a couple of events. Many of them were online during the COVID pandemic. I was super happy to be part of the high-level kickoff event of the UN Ocean Decade with Tando together. That was really cool. And then also because I'm the German youth ambassador, I was also in the German kickoff event of the Ocean Decade. And for, at first, it was really like the role of speaking about my generation's perspective, being invited to those policy events, which was completely new to me back then. Like I didn't even know that people were interested in, first of all, hearing my generation's point of view. And second of all, in the context of, of ocean science and ocean, I don't know, ocean in general. And yeah, I was involved in events a lot. And then also also together with Tando, we would work on the ocean literacy booklets where we are trying to discuss different topics and make them easily understandable for children as well in different languages. So there have been some activities here and there, being an ambassador, but mostly speaking about communication, really trying that policymakers also hear us and take us seriously. That's that's a very hard task. <laughs> yeah, so it's been a bit of a, I guess, a learning journey, but something that you you opened your eyes to a new perspective of uh, what your career could mean. And uh, yeah, it sounds uh, sounds really good, to, a good program to be part of. Uh, from previous conversation that we've had, we've we've spoken before, and uh, I know that you're really keen to engage the next generations of scientists in the field of marine research. So can you tell us about your involvement in that area? Uh, first, maybe in the Eurosea project, uh, uh, a Horizon 2020 project that, uh, that you're involved in, and one of Atlantico's sisters project. And then maybe more broadly as your aspiration to make a difference in, in the whole area of marine research. Yeah, of course. Um, I think it makes sense to give a little bit of a background what URC does really. So URC is an innovation action. So we're focusing on improving and integrating ocean observing and forecasting in Europe for a sustainable use of the ocean. So ocean observing is exactly what it sounds like. If we think of weather forecasts, um, that's what we do with the ocean, right? So we're a blue planet. We need to understand what's happening in the water. And that's where oceanography and ocean observing comes in. So if you want to predict something or you want to understand something, you need a starting point. And that usually is data. The more data you have, the more easier, the, the more easy it is to understand a process. And you can do analysis and then get a general understanding of every, how everything is connected. And in ocean observing, we talk about a huge diversity of data because you can probably imagine the, the ocean is so vast. The water, is, is, the water masses are so huge that, yeah, there can be physical, biochemical um, data that needs to be collected. And it can be obtained in many different ways. For example, you can go on a research cruise with a huge research vessel and drop all sorts of equipment in the water that, for example, collects water samples at different depths. But then, of course, you can also use autonomous vehicles like sail drones, wave gliders and gliders and Argo floats to measure important parameters all around the world. There's also a really cool mission at the moment, the sail drone mission, which is basically an uncrewed sailing boat that is sailing over the Atlantic Ocean collecting data. That's pretty cool, I think. And I guess it's important for people to understand that this data is really the basis of everything for us to understand the ocean. In the short term, we can give weather forecasts, we can understand the different operations of aquacultures, fishing quotes, and so on. But also in the long term, it's important to understand the predictions of climate, right? So we need to understand how ocean currents might be changing with climate change and together with the ocean currents, the nutrient cycles and so on. So super important for everyone to understand how important the ocean is, but also especially for my generation, I think. We can really see that there are a lot of people in my age that are very active because they are worried about their future. and. In the context of URC, I think ocean observing is always a little bit disregarded. People don't really understand that this is really the basis that we need to go further to understand more. And that's where I come in, really. I want to engage people in my generation 
mostly scientists because it is a very science heavy context. So I want to inform young scientists about the possibilities that you have in ocean observing and how many different things you can do in this context. But also I, I want to point out that it's important not to forget young people in my generation that have nothing to do with ocean science. They are maybe interested about it or maybe not even, but we really need everyone. Is it lawyers, economists and so on? Like the interdisciplinarity is very important there as well. So, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing with HERC or what I'm trying to get done. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, is the youth ambassador kind of giving you that kind of platform for your voice to be heard by your generation? Is that helping you? That's a that's an interesting question. I think as an ambassador, I find myself more often in like policy environments, political environments, where I speak to a lot of politicians. So older generations. <laughs> older generations, yeah. So I think... The, what I do there is maybe open the ears of the older generations to listen to us younger people as well. So that's maybe more the intersection. But I don't think as an ambassador, I have so much platform or so much opportunity to speak to people outside of science in my generation, for example. Yeah, so how then how do you do it? How do you engage with your with your generation then? Yeah, I try some some different activities, especially within EuroC. For example, I went to the ISMARA conference and I would present and do a workshop about different job profiles that you can find within the context of ocean observing to inspire young scientists and, and maybe inform them of the different opportunities that are out there. Apart from that, obviously, also there are some different things planned at the moment that I cannot <laughs> uh, talk about yet because it's not quite sure. But yeah, I'm thinking of different activities, obviously, to include people. I think what I always point out is that social media is a heavy thing in our generation and a lot of people get their information over social media. So I think to get really these people informed, we should use these platforms, the older generations. It's it's not so much natural for them to, to use social media. Yeah, I want to hear another kind of aspect, you know. So we know that the ocean is, is facing many challenges for the life within it and its ecosystems and all of the services it provides us just for everything that is important, as you mentioned earlier. So as a young scientist, what is your vision? What do you hope for when you think about the future of the ocean and how we can improve things? So as a young scientist, I definitely also want to mention that it's not always easy to stay positive. It is something that I carry with me all the time. If I hear too many bad news, it's really depressive. So I really try to, to be positive and I, I am happy that I have chosen this path that I know I am doing my best. I'm, I know I'm doing something that I fully stand behind. And so my hope would really be that really the whole world understands how important the ocean is for us. And I'm speaking really from a very good example. Coming from the south of Germany, I can promise you if I go to the streets and I talk to people and I ask them, how does the ocean influence you at the moment right now? They wouldn't really know how, right? So with every second breath you take, you you are breathing the oxygen the ocean provides, right? So that is something that I hope for people to understand is that we are a blue planet and we should not only speak about climate change without talking about the ocean because the world is, is covered by ocean. So that is a hope that I hope to that it will change over the next years that people really realize that the ocean is topic number one. And my vision is that we start taking responsibility. I I think many, many issues and, and problems in the ocean can be fixed if we include enforcement. We have, for example, protected areas where we can speak of and, and protect certain species of fish so they're not being overfished. Or we can make sure that there are not so many collisions with uh, marine megafauna if we stick to certain routes in the ocean and so on. So there's a lot of really good ideas out there, amazing scientists that come up with amazing concepts. But because the ocean is so huge, we have no control if people actually comply to the rules, right? And I think that's a big thing. If 
we have the police here on the streets making sure we're not driving over the speed limit, we should have something similar in the ocean. And one big thing is also that the high seas is no man's land at the moment. So no one feels like they're responsible for this area, but everyone takes whatever they can. So I really hope this is shifting in the future that we are, as humans, we are dominating the planet. So we need to take responsibility of the ocean as well. And that's something I really hope for the future. So, yeah, big, uh, big hopes. And uh, as you said, sometimes not easy to stay positive with all the overflow of bad information and the reports that we hear a lot about these days, especially with all the events going on around the world. And uh, yeah, but hopefully, you know, we keep the we keep that vision and we manage to get things changed little by little. And maybe that brings me to my last question today. As an ocean ambassador and just as yourself, I guess, do you have a message to share with our audience? It could be, I don't know, maybe a call to action, a word of encouragement or a, a wake up call or all of these things in one. Just what do you have to, to tell people? Yeah, I obviously want to say the the old cheesy thing you hear always is like, let's all work together and do something. Let's not just talk about it. Let's really be the change. That's something I I still think is a very important message. But I also want to send a call to action to the policymakers and really the people in power that they should listen to our generation or at least take us serious, take us in, get us to those meetings and, and get, give us a right to vote in big um, decisions that are taken these days because we're speaking about our future and so many young people want to take responsibility and they want to make sure that their future looks bright. and. We are professionals, right? We don't have maybe 20 years of experience, but we are professionals and we know what we're talking about. So I really just listen to us, take us in, have an open ear for us. I'm sure we can make something work all together. I think that's a, that's a beautiful way to end our conversation today with a powerful message from you, Fiona. Thank you for taking the time to speak to us and for sharing all of your messages. And uh, let's keep in touch for sure to, to make those changes happen. For sure. Thank you so much, Eloise. We hope that you've enjoyed today's episode and look forward to seeing you next time. You can follow the Atlantico project on our website on www.atlantico.eu. And you can also find us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. All the links and information on the project and on today's episode is in the show notes. Atlantico is a project funded under Horizon 2020, a European Union research and innovation programme.